And I come to call this the local methods or the local ways. They sneak out while you're eating in the middle of the lunch and pay the bill. So our outside visitors usually would try to be more civil and they would say, well, come on now, you can't pay that. That's too much. There's 12 of us. We'll pay our own. And being the observant guy that I am, I said, you know what? You shut up. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> Leave him alone. And I thought it was just done, but not too long ago, Kalpua, Milton Kalpua, did the same thing. And I noticed that these two guys were homegrown. And I said to myself, there is a local way of doing things. So when somebody who was grown here take you out to lunch, don't be so quick to ask for the bill, okay? <laughs> Learn well the local ways, the local methods of doing things. And God is the same way with us. When God gives us an assignment, don't be too quick to think that we know it all already. We have said it many times, it is good sometimes to sleep on it, on some things. That's one of the most of the thing, unless it's critically important that you respond and act right now. But most of the time, by tomorrow, the whole situation changes color and complexion. So sleep on it. Learn slowly that God's ways are very different, just as the local way is different from the greater majority of the United States. Learn by knowing the ways of God. If you want to know more of God, know who he is and how he operates, learn his ways. Two, learn more of God by knowing the character of God, not just deeds. Know the character of God, not just deeds. Webster again defined character as unique traits distinctive marks, style, your style. Psalm 103, verse 7, read it with me, ready, begin. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. He revealed his unique traits, his distinctive marks, his style that he revealed to Moses. To Israel, he revealed his deeds. If you don't understand that, think Christmas time. Christmas time, we give and receive presents. Little children usually, but sometimes grown ups too. We see the activities of God. We praise God. We love God for His activities. <coughs> Moses wanted to know the character of God. And as often the case, we take the present, we rejoice, we thank them, but we never stop to think. What kind of person is this? What kind of person who would give me a present for nothing? Usually we pay for what we want, what we need. But on Christmas time, these people do it for nothing. Well, some, I know some, some expect something bad. So we're not talking about those kind of people. We're talking about the one that would give and not expect anything back. That's God. That's the character that made God so different.
from us. Christmas, this coming Christmas, think unique. I need to know this person. What caused him or her to give me such a prize possession? Answered prayers. We do that quite a bit. We share the fact that God answers our prayer. How good he is. <clears throat> Have you ever stopped and said, God, why did you answer that prayer? Why me, the recipient of such great favor? We talk and tell everybody God answers prayer, thus. Or rather we say, there's power in prayer. Is power in the prayer? Or in the God who answers prayer? Pray for me. Because there's power in prayer. I would say we can change it and say, pray to God. There's power in the God who answers prayer. If there was no God, would your prayer be answered? We know God's character, or we need to desire His character, not just what He could do for us, but the person. And I feel sorry for many mothers sometimes, when they labor so hard for their children, and sometimes not even a thank you is said. Well, I appreciate it, mother or dad, Uniqueness in character. There's a man that, that most of us here that were here more than five years ago, no, remember? Stan Sager. He was a unique fellow because he doesn't talk much about himself. He doesn't brag about himself. It was many years before I learned that he was a fighter pilot. Not once did I ever heard him talk about the days when he was flying beyond enemy lines to confront the enemy. That was just not his character. And those of us who know the man appreciate him for who he is. Three, we know God more by knowing the spirit of God, not just the letter of the law. When we talk about the spirit of God, we talk about the heart of God. Philippians 3, verse 10. Let's read it together. Ready, begin. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised Him from the dead. I want to suffer with Him, sharing in His death. I want to know Christ. I want to know the heart of God, the Spirit of God. I want to experience that power that raised him from the dead. I want to experience suffering with him, sharing in his death. How did Jesus suffer? One thing we know about his suffering, that he never complained. He never complained. He was compared to the sheep before those who sheared the, the wool didn't murmur at all or complain. When things go rough with us and we know God is in control, we know God's hand is in this, do we complain? Do you complain? Jesus never did. And it was for you and for me that he suffered. How did he die? How did he die? In the Garden of Gethsemane, we saw their total submission to the Father's will. Total submission. You don't have to die physically to experience the death of Christ. The death of Christ was the death to his rights, to his own life, so that the Father's will will be done. 